Will you be returning to the hospital with a plethora of martyr-related items? For what amount of time is this going to last? Once Victor saw Sonora Delgado in the kitchen, he snapped at her and asked her some tough questions. Marina had been in the hospital for six months, going through a lot of chemotherapy and treatment. The doctors had given her a final, discouraging diagnosis. The tumor was growing and the disease was progressing. Ever since Marina was in the hospital, neither Sonora Delgado nor Victor had felt any relief, she was always at the hospital, and Victor had to work double shifts to pay the mortgage on their shared apartment. What gives you any right to object to the route I take there? You ought to pay Mari a more frequent visit on your own. She is your wife, and you act as though you have no guilt or remorse. Tell me when you last laid eyes on her. Well, if she's going to pass away anyway, what's the point of going there? Sonora Delgado snapped back, putting both of us through unnecessary suffering. Do not say anything, just so you know, I'm the one bringing in the dough to buy all these superfluous things that she isn't even permitted to consume, spending, 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 and yet here we are, the flat technically belongs to Mari, but for the past year I've been paying for the groceries and mortgage, your generosity is the sole reason I'm registered here, don't you dare scold me for something else. I'm already working two jobs without weekends or holidays. Given that Victor is the one acting heroically and putting in extra hours, Sonora Delgado jokingly suggested that you should remain silent and who covered all the costs back when, whether you were living off Mari for an entire year or just scraping by at our jobs, you never made much money, you should be ashamed of yourself, in all the 15 years that we were together. You never once chipped in to cover the mortgage or the electricity, and now you're putting in all that effort solely to ensure that you don't wind up homeless. You scoundrel, your mother isn't stupid, when she finally had enough of you, she put the responsibility on your wife, Mari recognized something in you, and I don't know how you've managed to stay alive for so long like you're sitting on a gold mine, if I hadn't agreed to sell two of my rooms and gave you money for the down payment, you would be living in a one-bedroom apartment right now, so, you should be thankful to both Mari and me. And please, don't begrudge my relocation here, my plans with. Mari were like that, my housing situation is also critical, the apartment, though, she is the rightful owner, not you, reward yourself, I would never have given you even one square meter if you had tied the knot before we'd lived together for five years, stay out of my way, Victor, well, Mari passes away, and we'll find out whose apartment it is, Sonora Delgado said, I can still give you a piece of my mind, and I'm good for it, on the other hand, are you under the impression that I will pack up? my belongings and vanish right after the funeral, quickly, please, you will relocate to your rural home, my beloved Sonora Delgado, since I am the spouse-in-law, we own everything together, I can easily prove in court that we were a family during those five years while we lived without the stamp, no need to be concerned, we will determine who is liable to whom, with a thud, he retreated to his room, changed into his clothes, and firmly shut the front door, Lord, my daughter had to commit her life. To this man, Sonora Delgado sobbed as she slid into a stool by the table, she reflected on her statement, telling herself that it was all there on his face, Marina met Victor during her student years, she had never been considered beautiful and envied the girls who had plenty of suitors, those girls went to the movies and cafes, walked home, and regularly received gifts, flowers, chocolates, perfumes, whatever the young people from simple families could afford, Marina, who was gifted with tall, stature, a flat figure, and poor eyesight, longed for the attention of boys at school, but the most disruptive ones teased her as for eyes, and Sparrow, she felt terrible shame for herself, despised her ugly body, and cursed, I don't understand what's making you so angry, Mari, all right, you were referred to as a bespectacled Sparrow by an Oscar, who cares, these young men are still naive for their age, they are simply boys, Consider getting contact lenses instead, nowadays, not only do females, but also boys wear them, like eagles, not everyone has perfect vision, Sonora Delgado told her daughter every time she returned home from school, she would be overcome with sadness, facial features aren't the most important thing, after all, what do you think these overly made-up girls will accomplish in life, those who have been damaging their skin with cheap cosmetics since they were 15 years old? All for the sake of pleasing the riffraff from their neighborhood, as you get older, things will 
Change, but the years passed with no change, despite wearing contacts instead of glasses, your tall stature and flat figure will remain, having a college education and promising career prospects are great, but nothing can replace the joy of college days, dates, moonlit kisses, joint countryside walks, and other romantic attributes that only gorgeous girls can feel. These thoughts have been firmly implanted in Marina's head since the day she experienced she had already accepted, long before she arrived at college, that she would eat alone in the cafeteria, read during lecture hall breaks, and review what she had memorized on the way home. Meanwhile, her classmates were having fun, skipping classes, and studying to avoid their parents' scolding. Marina's goal was to gain knowledge that would help her get a good job after graduation. He sat down next to her in the college cafeteria after two years of severe student loneliness. They had never met before, would you like to have lunch with? Me, she said with astonishment. Today, my lunch is already here, and there are a lot of people, every table is full, the young man requested courteously, it's not pleasant to eat when on your feet, for what reason not, listen, there's this whole bunch of young people eating by the windows, and they just throw their food right on the sills, Marina said with a mischievous grin, observing the look of stress in the young man's eyes, Marina quickly apologized, what, he said, of sure, take a seat, I was only kidding, she responded with, a smile, after all, you're a student in a different department than me, so I don't mind if you come have lunch with me, it was evident that they had never met in the lecture halls, Victor was visibly reluctant to go after lunch, would you like a pastry, I can buy it myself if I want, Marina said, though she was grateful for his promise to look after her, no young guy had ever purchased a present for her, not even for something as trivial as pastries from the college cafeteria, it was Marina's first absence from class, but for Victor, who frequently slept in, arrived late, and, on occasion, would spend the entire day playing video games at the closest internet cafe, spending a considerable amount of time in the cafeteria purchasing pastries and two coffees, where are you going to get accepted with grades like that, your mother would make a huge scandal out of it. Sonora Cortez bemoaned her son Victor's academic performance, saying, oh god, bless my nerves, you'll end up in the army, her son, had trouble passing tests and could only get into the paid sector, so she wondered what might be done, their cost would be incurred, son, just don't skip college so they don't expel you, otherwise, you'll end up in the army, Sonora Cortez moaned, mentally calculating whether her savings would be enough to pay for her son's education and survive if she lost her job, Sonora raised Victor alone, and her only concern was for his happiness, when he got older, though, he started to resent her, overprotectiveness, Ever since he was a kid, he had been fantasizing about moving out of his mom's place, except he was stuck, why is the army consuming your life, mom, all they have to do is draft me, nothing more, nowadays, they serve for just one year, if I'm expelled, I'll simply serve my time and that will be the conclusion of it, Victor told his mother in response to her remarks, do you not see this, hazing is another topic. So what happens if you find yourself in a really hot zone, Sonora Cortez threatened to chastised the student if she attempted to study, my character is strong, and you know that, you should not disobey my orders, everything will work out for the best if you listen to me, I will help you acquire a job after you graduate, the rest is up in the air, I do have connections, having a job and a degree are the most important things, his mother was Victor's worst nightmare, she was a strong-willed, domineering woman whose word was final in the household, because he was unable to cope with, her pressure, she filed for a divorce from Victor's father when he was only one year old, even though Victor's mother stated she had expelled his father from the family due to his excessive drinking and partying, Sonora Cortez firmly told him, your father, I don't even want to talk about him, when Victor inquired about him as an adult, you're missing out by not seeing him, he would have shown you how to let go, have fun, and drink, after I kicked him out, he moved to another city and we never spoke again, Sonora Cortez dismissed her son's inquisitiveness about his father by saying, thank God I haven't seen him in years, and it's better not to know him at all, the kid never made an effort to learn more about his father, it was pointless, if his father loved him, Victor reasoned, he would have sought a means to talk to him by now, since he hadn't, Victor reasoned, his son wasn't necessary, it wasn't his concern, therefore Victor refrained from discussing further specifics, it was a life altering meeting with Marina. Things could not have turned out better, even for Victor, who sat down next to her in the cafe, 
Just like her, he had never been well liked by females, his small stature and somewhat stocky body did little to enhance his already good looks despite the fact that he was no longer a teenager, he yearned for a committed relationship, it was what his body needed, and he didn't much relish the idea of spending his entire life at his mother's side, Marina was invited out on a date a few months after. They first met, she was absolutely ecstatic, Victor saved up some of his mother's pocket money for flowers and cafes, but he had no plans to combine school and work, it would be too much of a burden, he did, however, realize that she found him attractive, and eventually he decided they should move in together, as for where they should live, that was already taken care of Marina, who knew all about Victor's strained relationship with his mother, offered him to stay in Sonora Delgado's room, they lived in a nice communal apartment near the capital, and Sonora Delgado graciously offered him to move in, Marina had never met her father, and her mother avoided talking about him, so, Victor moved in with her, Victor, first I must speak with my mother, and then you must speak with yours, it is not acceptable for you to suddenly go without giving my mom a warning, and I also cannot bring you home without her knowledge, no, I totally agree with you, then until tomorrow, we won't call each other, Today, we'll meet at the college as usual, Marina continued, of course, she won't kick us out, that's clear, but still, Victor agreed wholeheartedly, as soon as Marina returned home, she began talking to her mother, mom, you've seen me, right now at least, she said, it's still early in my career, who will I marry in the next 5 to 10 years, every single guy has completely ignored me, are you hoping that I become an old maid, Marina spoke with a sorrowful expression, I don't understand what you're saying. You are so beautiful, my dear, you will discover joy, moving in together isn't necessary if you don't love each other, her mom told her to keep dating and that they would find out later, mom, he's the best, he's decent, generous, and not naive, he's gaining knowledge, we complement one another wonderfully, we'll have a good family, Marina insisted. Sonora Delgado was afraid she would lose her daughter if she stood firm on her position, but she had no choice but to agree since it was Marina's decision and she couldn't change it, her daughter was an adult, oh, and now you're leaving your own mother, Sonora Cortez stated with an angry tone when her son discussed moving in with his girlfriend, I raised you all your life, gave you everything, did everything for you, and now you, what, she continued, expressing her displeasure with the concept, now is not the time to live with a partner, so why? So what happens if you manage to conceive a child with her, it took her a while to collect herself and accept her son's departure from home, goodbye, college and university, welcome, fatherhood and responsibilities, well, you've picked quite a witch, son, Sonora Cortez didn't meet Marina until right before the wedding, several years after the transfer, and they didn't communicate for over a year afterwards, you simply cannot look at Marina without being moved to tears. Sonora Cortez exclaimed upon seeing Marina, you are an exemplary young man, and I dare say you could not find a more beautiful life partner, it is very terrible, the prospect of seeing her grandchildren's faces makes Sonora Cortez dizzy, so she rolls her eyes theatrically and refuses to divulge any further information, please, mom, just be quiet, anyone could overhear you, during Marina's approach to meet her mother-in-law, Victor reprimanded Sonora Cortez, telling her to behave yourself, Sonora Cortez smiled, but Marina could tell by her expression that she wasn't liked, despite living together for 15 years, they rarely crossed paths. Most of the time, Victor would visit his mother alone in the days leading up to the wedding, Sonora Delgado sold two rooms in the shared apartment and offered Marina the proceeds as a down payment for a three-room apartment, Mari, I did it this way so that we can formalize the deal before the wedding, Sonora Delgado explained, this will be your wedding gift, the most important thing is to register the apartment in your name, excluding him from any potential claims in the event of a dispute. Despite being located distant from the city core, the three rooms are nevertheless a plus, it will have its own room if a child is born, right after the baby is born, we will transfer ownership, in any case, it's preferable to have room than to be crammed mom, tell me what you're referring about, no matter what, we will register Victor, you will reside with us, he is my spouse, thanks to her mother, Marina said, these are your funds, so you have the right to live in this apartment, living in a 
room, even in a very good and decent communal apartment, or a three-room apartment with her mother was obviously unmatched, it was in the new apartment that Marina registered Victor following the wedding, she believed that when they all moved in together, him, her, and Sonora Delgado, husband and wife should be registered at the same address, Marina didn't think about any other possibilities, they lived reasonably well, Marina was an economist and had a good income, Marina didn't complain because, she was grateful to her mother for helping with the apartment purchase, otherwise, they would have lived wherever Victor managed to graduate with difficulty, but he never found a decent and steady job, Marina, though, was unfazed, she supported her husband in everything, even when he spent whole days at home after another dismissal playing computer games, Marina never said a word about it, they never had children, but Victor was unconcerned, in fact, he would try to dissuade his wife from having children whenever he felt the need. Marina, I don't see any problem with our little group, I don't understand why we have to go to so many different clinics for these tests, this money could probably get us a modest car, Victor would always respond whenever Marina brought up the subject of having a family, how are things going, Victor, you want a family only a short while ago, what changed, I don't know, her husband's hesitancy disturbed Marina. She had never given any thought to the possibility that he was being dishonest about. His desire to become a father, maybe you've stopped loving me, she thought, Victor came to the realization that he wasn't emotionally prepared for this, the sound of a baby crying in restless nights didn't bother him at all, he was happy with his life as it was and didn't want to change a thing, little did Marina know that her husband had become unfaithful and had been seeing his former co-worker for nearly two years. Despite their growing distance, she paid little attention to the fact that they were becoming less intimate, Victor would frequently be late for work on weekdays and disappear on weekends, claiming to be going to the SAA with friends, Marina worked too much and was too exhausted to analyze her husband's behavior, but she persisted in the idea of undergoing examinations, despite Victor's repeated requests, the fact that Victor was so against it baffled Sonora Delgado, who was concerned about her daughter, all the necessities for living were met by them and she deliberately purchased a large apartment with a separate room for a child and all amenities, Marina was told, don't listen to him, the main thing is that you want a child and that you're able to give birth, you have housing and you have a job, if anything happens, you can stand on your own feet and don't get upset, don't despair, I also had you late and there's nothing wrong with that, hearing this made Marina feel very uneasy. She fantasized about having a child with her cherished husband and sharing all the joys of parenthood with him. From playing with him to changing his diapers, it was never meant for these ideas to materialize, though, she went home from the exam feeling as gloomy as a cloud, Victor claimed he was going fishing with pals, so he was once again absent, I'll tell his mom first, and then I'll tell him, that's better, she thought to herself, her complexion paled when Sonora Delgado listened to the prognosis, Mari, this is so unfair, you're still so young, she started to bemoan mom, let's not do this, young old, it's that type of cancer that can strike anyone, I'll have more examinations at several other clinics, consult with doctors, but the results of the tests were negative across the board, even though Marina held out hope that the doctor had erred during the first assessment, she was forced to accept her fate after seeing three additional specialists, it was a rhetorical question, but Sonora Delgado knew it, Mari, but this can be treated, right, you will undergo treatment, won't you, Sonora Delgado. We'll stop at nothing to see that Marina had the therapy she needed so she could get well, there was, however, no assurance that the therapy would work after six months of chemotherapy, the effects were minimal at best, there was a glimmer of hope for Marina that she might get better and go back to her old self at some point, unfortunately, the tumor started growing again a few months later, and the disease was developing at a rapid pace, Marina hardly had a moment to process it before she was rendered immobile, Sonora Delgado requested an ambulance due to the unbearable discomfort, Marina entered a hospice a few days down the road, Sonora Delgado could see that Victor was acting detached from the situation, even though he was obviously concerned, he started talking about next steps the second Marina was taken to the hospital remorse and pity were non-existent, in order to keep up with the home payments, he took on two jobs, there wasn't much left, but he held out hope that the flat would rightfully be his upon his wife's passing. 
All of Sonora Delgado's time was devoted to the hospital, for some reason, she knew in her heart that her daughter was slowly disappearing, despite the bleakness of the situation, she clung to the hope that everything will work out in the end, despite her disagreement with her son-in-law earlier in the day, she was in a good mood as she prepared to visit the hospital today. She had come to believe that he was a horrible human being and was planning to divorce him and force him out of the apartment as soon as Marina got well, she wished she could believe it, the phone rang as she was getting ready to go out the door, a call came in from the medical facility, indeed, I am paying attention, she responded with qualm, I apologize, the other party said, well, tell me already, what happened, your daughter passed away an hour ago, please accept my condolences, what, but she was alive just yesterday, Sonora Delgado, we all understand, we saw a few days ago that she had very little time left. We just didn't tell you, and you didn't ask, we will contact the morgue and let you know when you can pick up the body, bring the necessary documents, once again, my condolences, Sonora Delgado paid no attention whatsoever as brief beats emanated from the opposite end of the telephone, as soon as she heard the doctor's words, her entire life flipped upside down, she sobbed uncontrollably when she slumped against the hallway wall, even though she was still alive, her beloved daughter Marina, her flesh and blood, had passed away, it was only at that moment that the horror of children leaving this world before their parents became clear to her, according to Sonora Delgado, I'm going to the country house for a few days, want to visit the church, talk to the friendly priest, and be alone, she remarked soon after the funeral, don't you dare cause any trouble while I'm gone, I'll deal with you when I get back, and Victor, you should consider moving in with your mother, no shame, no conscience. You stood at the funeral like a statue and acted at the memorial service as if you hadn't buried your wife but had come for a tea party. Shameful, it's not for you to reproach me, in her forceful response to Victor, Sonora Delgado urged him not to share his moral opinions, she reminded him that they would have to share the property within six months and that she had a claim to it because she had helped pay the mortgage for the last year and is still helping. She stressed that it was easily verifiable that Marina had bought the flat with Sonora's money for the down payment before she married Victor while Sonora despised Victor's behavior, she cautioned him not to rely on receiving anything and even suggested he go in with his mother if she would accept him, she threatened to leave her work and stop paying the mortgage if he didn't pay half of it, and she insisted on staying in the flat for the following six months, claiming her registration there, the bailiffs would remove Victor before the six months were over, according to Sonora's prediction, so he would have to accompany her, in response to Victor's insanity doubts. Sonora reaffirmed her position and told him to visit their rural estate, taking the bus to her destination, Sonora wondered if her savings would be enough to pay off the mortgage early when she returned, despite her daughter's tragic passing, which she attributed to Victor's instability and lack of support, she was adamant about evicting him from the flat. The years of helping Marina pay the mortgage made Sonora feel guilty since she hadn't encouraged Marina to believe in herself even more. Upsetting to her was her criticism of Victor, who she accused of being too reliant on his mother and of having unpredictable work habits, immediate confession and a meeting with a priest were necessities for Sonora Delgado, on purpose, she went to the church close to her house, she trusted the priest enough to see him exclusively during summer holidays at her country estate, even though they were already acquainted, although she wished she could be closer to Marina's burial at the country house. She knew that many of Marina's friends and acquaintances wouldn't go there in the winter. Sonora hoped that everyone would have the opportunity to properly say their goodbyes and pay their respects at the gravesite whenever they felt the need. Sonora encountered an unanticipated and upsetting circumstance upon her return to the city three days later. She was unable to open her apartment door with her key. Frustrated, she yelled out to Victor, threatening to call the cops if he didn't answer the door quickly. There was complete silence within the house while she listened nervously to the doorbell, and the thought crossed her mind that Victor might have passed away there above Sonora, a neighbor chimed in to scold her about her disruptive behavior, after learning she hadn't met her neighbor before, Sonora apologized and explained her predicament, feeling ashamed, it wasn't Sonora's right to try to force her way into the flat, the neighbor said, so she should call the police instead, recognizing the logic in her neighbor's counsel, Sonora acquiesced, feeling exhausted, and overwhelmed, she limped down to the street, drained of energy, too weak to even dial 911 for help, Sonora Delgado chose to rest on a bench close to the entrance after deciding to do so, 
The days leading up to her return from the rural house had been a whirlwind of church visits, prayers for her daughter who had passed away, and nightmares that kept her from getting any sleep, thinking about how to open the flat door. She considered her options, she thought to herself, it might be easier to walk to the police station than to wait for them to respond to a call, as she stealthily made her way to the tram stop, though she knew she could assert her rights by presenting them her registered address and passport, Sonora weighed the alternative of phoning locksmiths during the tram ride, still, she couldn't get the feeling that Victor had changed the locks on purpose, even though she didn't understand his motivations, did he expect her to be too chicken to brave the winter weather and make a fuss, sending her scuttling back to the barn for months. Despite the fact that she was determined to keep the flat, she faced considerable obstacles due to the thought of living in semi-rural solitude throughout winter, Sonora discovered a bright side to the issue when she arrived at the police station, a chance to legally remove Victor from her home, she went up to the on-duty officer and described her situation, asking for help, my son-in-law locked me out of the house and changed the locks, who can help me with this, asked her, the police officer wanted to know more, like if she was sure the locks had been changed and whether she could clarify her residency status, Sonora spoke on the recent passing of her daughter and their joint habitation, confirming her registration at the flat, the apartment is registered in my daughter's name, and both my son-in-law and I are listed on it, I was at the country house for three days, according to her, and when I returned, I couldn't get into the apartment, are you sure everything is okay with your son? In law, if you're suggesting that he's so devastated by his wife's passing that he took his own life, it's unlikely, Sonora responded with sarcasm, write a statement so we can open the apartment based on the need to check for an accident, what kind of accident, she said, her voice tinged with doubt, I told you, my son-in-law kicked me out of the house, how can the locks not open, obviously, they were changed, what else could it be, the duty officer asked Sonora Delgado to write a statement, and, then gave her some paper and a pen, as soon as you write a statement, our team will go with you, we'll open the apartment, make sure everything is fine with your son-in-law, and then discuss your family situation further, most likely, what happened between you falls outside our jurisdiction, you'll need to resolve it in court as it's not a criminal matter. But he had absolutely no right to kick you out of the house since you were registered there, we'll get to the bottom of everything, the police. Crew entered the residence two hours afterward. In the corridor, Sonora Delgado saw a pair of shoes for women that she did not recognize, Victor was found sleeping with another lady when she hurried into her daughter's bed, there was an odor of alcohol in the room, broken bottles scattered on the floor, and uneaten food on the plates, as you can see, your son-in-law is alive, well, and even looks fairly decent, the police officer added, taking the blanket off the bed, Sonora Delgado snatched the terrified girl by the hair and pulled her down. The corridor, the mom was so angry that the police officer struggled to separate her from the girl while she attempted to soothe them both, Sonora Delgado became angry and yelled at the cops, telling them, you rich scum, get out of here, don't touch me, let me throw her out into the stairwell, calm down, or else I'll have to charge you with assault and hooliganism too, the police officer warned with a hint of sternness, I'm sorry, but you understand, my girl hasn't been buried for long, and he's already lying in her apartment, in her bed, with someone else, what a scoundrel, my god, Sonora Delgado cried out, sincerely sad for Sonora Delgado and empathizing with her sorrow, the police officer persisted in consoling her, here, take my passport, the blonde girl said as she presented the officer with her travel document, my name is Alejandra, it's all written there, just so you know I'm not a prostitute or anything like that, I came to visit him, we've been dating for a long time, over a year, According to her, again, Sonora Delgado yelled out, you rich, when she stared at Victor, who was so confused because of his hangover, that he couldn't comprehend a word, the police officer gave Alejandra her passport back after checking it over, everything is fine, you're free to go, he commented, Alejandra, who appeared taken aback, dashed into the corridor, in a flash. She slipped on her coat and boots and hurried out of the apartment, so, let's figure this out, the cop said Sonora Delgado, let's allow Victor to get dressed. 
Afterward, he'll provide us with his documents and explain what happened, then I'll clarify your rights and responsibilities even being furious was too much for Sonora Delgado, when she lay in her grave, all she could think of was the expression on her beloved Marina's face, around 30 minutes after that, Sonora Delgado, the district officer, and Victor all met in the kitchen, the investigator pleaded with Victor, asking him to clarify what had transpired, your mother-in-law stated in her complaint that you kicked her out of the house and changed the locks, when she came home, she couldn't access her own residence, well, you know that my wife passed away, didn't you, she probably told you, Victor started, his speech garbled caused by the booze, and who is the heir to the wife, right, the lawful husband, so, I'm the heir, and I have every right to change the locks, as for this one, he regarded Sonora Delgado with contempt, I'll evict her through the courts, once I sober up completely, I'll go to court and kick her out, the investigator went on to say, I'm sorry to break it to you, Sonora Delgado is registered here, this is her permanent place of residence, you can only formalize your wife's inheritance after six months, but you won't be able to become the sole owner of the entire apartment in any case, if your wife didn't leave a will, then according to the law, you will receive only half of the apartment, and the other half will be inherited by your mother-in-law. Sonora Delgado, you can't evict her under any circumstances, so, you'll have to coexist on the same property until the inheritance is settled afterward, you can complete all the necessary paperwork and sell the apartment, changing locks is strictly prohibited, and you will be held accountable for it, you can only have guests in the house until 11.00 pm, unless you've made other arrangements with Sonora Delgado, nervousness and rage began to show in Victor's eyes as he lost all composure, with a Yell of, I'll take care of you right now. You damn, Victor swung at the police officer before two of them swiftly drew him away, subdued him, and put him in handcuffs, as the police officer told his colleague, we'll take the man to the station, let him think about it for 15 days, draw up a protocol for hooliganism, Victor's hands were held behind his back and you, sir, if you keep causing trouble, we could extend it to 30 days. Give the keys to Sonora Delgado, there on the table in the room, Victor muttered an unhappy sigh to himself. The officer spoke to Sonora Delgado and asked her to check before they said farewell. After obtaining the keys, she entered the room and repeatedly opened and closed the door. Everything is in order, Sonora Delgado mentioned, thank you for your help, for your promptness, thank you for coming, if it weren't for you, I don't know what I would have done, no need for thanks, it's our job, and don't worry so much regarding the apartment. Consult with a good civil lawyer. I would help here, but I don't understand anything about it," the officer replied with a grin after Sonora Delgado locked the apartment door behind her, she entered the room and promptly fell onto the bed, she had been so exhausted for several days that she had trouble focusing on anything, her concerns temporarily receded, and she quickly drifted off to sleep, even though she was aware that they were only just starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. Sonora Cortez stormed into Sonora Delgado's apartment and accused her of, how dare you file a report with the police about my son, I'm asking you again, how dare you, last night I called my son, couldn't reach him, in the morning, I started calling morgues, hospitals, and came to the police to report a missing person, and now it turns out he's been in the lockup since yesterday, do you even realize what they might do to him during these 15 days, Sonora Cortez? Come inside the apartment and we can talk like adults, Sonora Delgado responded with composure, you're yelling so loudly. The whole staircase can hear you, I couldn't care less about you and your neighbors, I'll go in, yes, with your permission you seem to think this is your house only, but I'll only go in to tell you everything I think of you, and I'd be glad to never see you again, I used to hold back, after all, my son was married to your daughter, but now, I have nothing to hold back for concluded Sonora Delgado. Sonora Cortez rushed into the kitchen barefoot the second she shut the door to the flat, so here's what I want to tell you, Sonora Delgado, if anything happens to my son, I'll make your life a living hell, you will remember me for a long time, she added, I told him from the beginning that he shouldn't get involved with your daughter, it wouldn't lead to anything good, and what's the result, he spent a year on your rundown property, and now you want to take everything away from him, what audacity, Sonora Cortez, declared Sonora Delgado, your son only spent a year working, and the rest of the time, my daughter was supporting the family, and yes, in case you've forgotten, 
he was in and out of work their entire life together was tumultuous, only my marina brought any bread to the family, and your son had the audacity to bring some fling into her apartment, into her room, right after her passing, do you think that's normal, so what, you mean he's not supposed to live now, is that it, marina passed away, marina won't come back, but my son is still young, he's only 35, he has a whole life. Ahead of him, he's in the prime of his life, Sonora Cortez responded, didn't you think that he might bury himself next to your daughter, god forbid, I've never wished anything bad for Victor, but his behavior has crossed all acceptable human boundaries, let him bring his flings into your apartment, let them have a blast right in front of you, but there won't be a trace of his woman here, I promise you, and he won't get any share of the apartment, don't even dream about it, we'll see about that. Legally. He should get half of Marina's remaining property, after all, they were married for 15 years, said Sonora Delgado, it's not child's play, not 15, but 10, the first 5 years, they were just living together, and I really didn't want my daughter to tie her fate to your son, I understood what kind of person he was back then, replied Sonora Cortez, my son did Marina a favor when he married her. She saw herself in the mirror and, unlike you, didn't have illusions, she evaluated her husband and did everything to keep him from leaving, who else would need her, you, Sonora Delgado, have too high an opinion of your daughter, not only was she unattractive, but she was also sterile, for all those years, she didn't give birth to a single child for my son because she couldn't, and she couldn't do to her bony figure, she had no health, she was nothing but skin and bones, where would children come from? Sonora Cortez responded with a smirk, Sonora Delgado reached her breaking point after hearing. These remarks and seized Sonora Cortez by the hair, in agony, Sonora Cortez yelled out, what are you doing, have you gone mad, let go of me, I'll go to the police, what a grip, release me immediately, I don't care where you go, listen, if you ever come back to my house and dare to speak ill of my daughter, I will use these very hands to strangle you, I am desperate and have nothing to lose, have I been clear, Sonora Delgado curled her fingers in Sonora Cortez's hair and cocked her head to the side. Sonora Cortez stood up from the kitchen table and made her way to the door, crystal clear, crystal clear, I'm leaving, you're insane, being in the same room with you is dangerous, my son would really be better off living with me until the inheritance is sorted out, otherwise, you might hurt him more, god forbid, end him, she explained, turning the key in the lock, Sonora Delgado muttered, goodbye, I won't keep you, she was taken aback by her own reaction, but she couldn't tolerate hearing derogatory. Remarks about Marina from a woman she had only seen a handful of times and who had chosen not to attend the burial. No mother would be able to take such a betrayal, following Sonora Cortez's departure, Sonora Delgado sobbed for two hours before contacting many legal firms to schedule consultations, we can communicate online if this format is more convenient for you, in this age of modern technology, there's no need to waste your time on unnecessary trips, the woman added with politeness, the online model isn't appealing to Sonora Delgado since she doesn't have a good grasp of computers, she said, can we talk on? The phone and the lawyer nodded in agreement, after she explained everything, the lawyer gave her the assurance that her premarital assets would not be divided because they were not community property, inquiries on Marina's accounts and other assets were also made by the lawyer, according to the lawyer, that would be conditional on Marina's having left a will, whatever the case may be. Her husband could attempt to challenge it in court, however, considering his conduct in the last few years and his behavior following his wife's passing, it was highly doubtful that he would succeed, nevertheless, it would be prudent to collect proof that Victor had a minimal impact on the family's lives, was frequently unemployed, seldom paid his wife a visit when she was sick, cheated, and acted inappropriately, it was unknown to Sonora Delgado if Marina had left a will. She had always trusted her mother and her daughter had never been secretive, however, it is possible that she withheld such a crucial element, the closing of the mortgage was also Sonora Delgado's responsibility, she had spent nearly all of her savings on Marina's therapy, so this was a major concern, it wasn't until she got to the bank that she found out there was still $50,000 outstanding, Sonora Delgado was frightened to spend the $110,000 that had accumulated in her account. She was not a young person anymore and might need medical attention at any moment, she also needed to leave something for Marina's memorial, making this choice was the hardest thing she had ever done. 
her pension was so meager that it would take a long time to replenish the depleted funds, restoring the old quantity would take more than five years, on the other hand, Marina had no interest in living with her immoral ex-husband in the apartment she had worked so hard to buy with nearly all of her savings, she couldn't bear the thought of what it would do to her daughter's legacy, its own decision was made. Sonora Delgado went to the bank the following day to finalize the mortgage by transferring. The missing cash, a month later, she went to the funeral home to make the necessary arrangements for the monument's installation, including paying the down payment, after a long absence, she finally felt at peace and liberated upon her return home, she no longer felt as intense stress because the difficulties had been somewhat resolved, what was ahead was, of course, a mystery to her, 15 days later. Why haven't I been able to reach you for two weeks now, I've been calling and calling, but. Your phone is unavailable, I saw the notification that you appeared online, and I called immediately, Victor, what's going on, are you avoiding me, Sandra asked with a nervous tone, I apologize for misunderstanding your previous request, here's the passage with direct speech indicated by hyphens, no, Sandra, I'm not avoiding you, how could you think that, I've just been released from prison, I'm on my way home now, responded Victor, with astonishment, Sandra demanded, what are you saying, released. From prison, Victor, what happened, Sonora Delgado filed a complaint against me because I changed the locks, well, you remember that scandal, you witnessed it all, when you left, the police officer called us into the kitchen and started explaining our rights and all, well, I couldn't take it and expressed everything I thought, so, they locked me up for 15 days, where are you now, I'm going to my mom's place, I'm sure she's already talked to Sonora Delgado, maybe they've come to some agreement because of how dangerous it is. I will not be returning there, it is impossible to predict the additional ideas that the old woman might devise, since her daughter passed away, she has obviously become detached from reality, regardless, we won't linger on the serious aspects are you doing well, Victor, Sandra, there is a really crucial matter that requires our immediate meeting, I've just come out of that horrible area, I need to grab some food, a good shower, and some sleep before I head home, tomorrow, we can have a conversation, it would be great if we could meet up in the city, maybe at a cafe, to talk, it is really critical that this take place today, Victor, sure, I'll just go home now, after I shower and get some sleep, I will go to the location you choose, would you mind if I asked, sure, that's correct, alright, that has been decided, perhaps we could meet at a cafe on Central Street or some other downtown area there, Sandra, it's expensive, what do you think about my coming to your area, we can discuss the details then, very well, I like that idea, you can't rely on me to be available for a chat at my place, both my mother and father will be at home all day, very well, I will inform you as soon as I am leaving on his way home, he was so exhausted that he was on the verge of passing out, one thing provided him solace, it was nothing like Sonora Delgado's apartment, he was sure that upon his return, his mom had made all of his favorite meals, allowing him to indulge in a hearty meal and relax from the doorstep. Sonora Cortez hurried to embrace her son, asking, my dear boy, how are you? Are you all right? She had been in excruciating pain for the previous two weeks. Every morning at five o'clock, she would find it difficult to go back to sleep. She did her best to ignore the many disturbing ideas that were racing through her head, but she just couldn't sit still. Oh, look how much you've grown, my dear. She continued fussing, calm down, everything's fine, yes, it's not paradise there. Not even close. But it's bearable, they didn't harm me, and they even fed me, although I can hardly call that slop they serve their food, Victor replied with a chuckle, immediately walking to the bathroom to wash his hands, everything is ready, my darling, they were going to let you go this morning, I could tell by counting the days, for my peace of mind, I contacted the authorities last night. I would have told them what was on my mind if they hadn't released you, I can whip up your go-to omelet, I've already baked some croissants so it wouldn't go cold, mom, I didn't make it ahead of time, I intend to wash my hair now, you can whip up the omelet while we wait, Victor joked, when Victor savored his meal, Sonora Cortez made an effort to elucidate the merits of postponing his visit to Sonora Delgado's residence until the property partition was finalized, is this for real, is that how she truly attacked you? With a look of shock and unease on his face, Victor spoke, gosh, mom, you're being so dramatic. Right now, 
I wish I could have been there, Victor remarked, how come you took that girl to her apartment, Victor, what led to your involvement in a scandal, Sonora Cortez bemoaned the fact that her grandson would undoubtedly turn this information against her, there must be another place where you two could meet, you changed the locks for what reason, I own this place, mom, yes, I am right. Just because I'm married legally doesn't mean I can't inherit, I don't see the need in requesting her. Approval to invite someone to my residence, my son, Victor spoke with conviction, but you do realize that you'll become the full lawful owner only six months after Marina's passing, and even then, it's not guaranteed, Sonora Cortez quietly said, what do you mean by not guaranteed? The table was pounded by Victor's fist, do you want to convince me like those investigators that I have no rights, please, Victor? Keep your cool, you are well versed in the laws, we must act strategically, not rashly, if we want to win the flat. Okay, I'll let you sleep, later this evening, I have a meeting, please wake me up at 8 o'clock so that I can arrive by 9 or risk falling asleep, it's exhausted me, who are you meeting with, assuming it's not confidential, Salome Cortez inquired, next to Sandra, she apparently has been attempting to reach me for the last two weeks by calling my number. I was unable to inform her of my 15-day detention because she does not have your phone number, Victor disclosed, is it serious between you two? Questioned by Sonora Cortez's mom, I'm not sure, we began dating when Marina's troubles became more serious, we met at my former employment, you know, I reached my breaking point, sometimes she just doesn't show up to work, other times she has secret plans, and other times she stays in the kitchen all day with her mom, oh, I was drained, on the other hand, Sandra is unique, I have no idea how serious it is. According to Victor, he has already amassed enough wealth from his marriage, so he has no intention of marrying her, I can put her here if you're interested, I am not opposed, all of that makes sense to me, you have needs as an adult, on the other hand, I still make occasional trips to Atlanta, where I meet up with pals for rural trips, when you need to meet, just let Sonora Cortez know and we can coordinate, so to speak, very well, mother, much obliged. Thank you so much, Victor said with gratitude. The moment Victor's head hit the pillow, he dozed off. There was no need for concern. Since he was unaware of Sandra's intended message, he was taken aback, though, when he learned why she had summoned him for the meeting, he certainly hadn't anticipated this at first, he was at a loss for words because it had come so suddenly and unexpectedly, now, what were you trying to convey to me, coming here instead of sleeping after everything I've been through in the past two weeks? what's the big deal? Upon taking a seat at the cafe table, where Sandra was already waiting, Victor requested without pronouncing a word. She mentioned being pregnant to Theo while smiling, we're expecting a baby, he made an effort to conceal his shock, he had absolutely no intention of doing this, Sandra broke the awkward silence after one minute by saying, isn't that wonderful, I was hoping it would make you happy, excuse me, but are you certain it is my child, he inquired, without a doubt, it is yours, Victor, could someone else be the one, why on earth would you believe anything different, Sandra, she said, my bad, that is, completely not what I intended, I apologize, for the sake of clarity, I simply wanted to confirm, then what are you going to do, Victor asked, I don't understand, naturally, Theo, have a baby, is this all you're feeling, I really believed we were committed to one another, where will we settle down, and more crucially, how will you spend your maternity leave? After Sonora Delgado's antics and my 15 days for hooliganism, my job security is questionable at best, except when we're staying with your parents or mine. None of us has a permanent residence, the age gap between us is another factor, after all, Sandra was worried that it wouldn't be a good marriage ideal, I don't understand, what on earth are you referring to, Victor wanted to know, well, give it some thought, me, I'm 35 years old, I'm a grown guy now, even though I've been married previously, I don't see myself getting hitched anytime soon, plus, you're still rather young, at 24 years old, you're in your early 20s, who would, desire this, it was Victor who gave the explanation, so, the idea is to abort the kid, right, Theo, do you not understand, Sandra shouted, I'm recommending that you be reasonable, even before we started dating, you were aware that I am unable to meet your needs, having a family was never in our plans, we were only in it for the fun of it, our enjoyable time together should carry on in the same vein, adding further complexity is unnecessary, in my opinion, consider it on your own, Sandra, your 
not a complete moron. Victor reasoned in the end, Victor, I love you, the couple's impending marriage was Sandra's original intention when they began dating, she admitted, I didn't believe it was so apparent for you, Sandra, after a while, after your wife's funeral and some time has passed, that it was evident, of course, you will, however, continue to procreate prolifically, I'm well into my thirties, and you're still quite young, I hope you get my point, I don't want to start from the beginning because I've been married and lived in a family, so, what exactly are you proposing, immigrating with my parents or yours, just like she disliked Marina, what if my mom has strong feelings against you, we were in the same class, had the same age, and she simply despised her, will your parents be overjoyed to welcome me into their family as a son-in-law, will they be able to put up with my prospective mother-in-law for the next two decades as our child grows up, no way, I'm not prepared, I apologize, Victor said, after. Hearing that, Sandra was totally confused, she believed Victor loved her deeply, just as he was, she adored him, she couldn't care less about the other men in her circle, even though they were more handsome and accomplished, neither her contemporaries nor men significantly older than her piqued her interest Victor possessed an ethereal quality, something about him made her feel like he was her soulmate, but she couldn't put her finger on it, it became clear that Victor had always had a different perspective, she attempted to suppress her emotions as she continued, Victor, I didn't expect this from you, what sort of individual were you hoping I would turn out to be, tell me, please, then why the broad strokes, choosing to live independently for a period of time is perfectly acceptable in my book, I've been married for 15 years, yes, it doesn't appear terrible at first, there are undeniably benefits, I was a student, though, and I lacked experience and maturity at the time, Leaving my mom behind was a relief because she had a tendency to overwhelm me with her cares to the point that I felt like running away. Having a lady I could confide in and rely on for anything was a huge relief, it was spotless, tasty, and quite cozy, however, marriage might become intolerable after a while, particularly when she starts demanding her rights, is always nagging, says she needs children, this, and that, while you don't have any requirements of your own, it is just the way it is, you must act as though you are taking part in family activities, though, because she is your wife, you have to control your temper before you lose it, start yelling, or say no, my patience has run out, and I will not, under any circumstances, return to that pattern I apologize, Victor said, his voice betraying his annoyance, with her face covered in tears, Sandra smacked him in the face before hurriedly leaving the cafe, Victor was irate, but he wasn't mad with her, Lord, I am so irritated by the situation overall, for some time now, they have been invading my life and trying to dictate my every move, he wondered aloud how much, Longer this would continue, after finishing his coffee and paying the bill, an enraged Victor stepped out onto the street and aimlessly wandered the city for approximately two hours, for some reason, he linked being outside with a sense of liberation that he had never had before, from his mother to his mother-in-law and wife, and now to Sandra and her child, he has been governed by a succession of women, for him, it was all too much, following Marina's passing, his desire was to possess her. A state and lead a life of solitude, free from other interference, is it really too ambitious to try to make a reality, he thought to himself, he began making his way to the subway as soon as he realized he couldn't just wander the city at will anymore, a terrifying thought crossed his head when he sat on the train, already underground, listening to the lullaby of the wheels over the course of the trip. He devised a strategy to ensure that no one would suspect him, he was overconfident at the time and didn't realize it would lead anywhere. It turned out that his inflated sense of self-confidence was unwarranted, by the time Victor realized it, it would be too late, Marina passed away 40 days ago, hey there, kid, what are your plans for today, Sonora Cortez inquired with a hint of worry, mom, it's been 40 days since Marina passed away, it is etched in my memory, as you may recall, she is no longer known as my Marina, it's too late. Is that the question then, no plans have been made by Sonora Delgado, despite my certainty that nothing will transpire, I am nevertheless worried that she will not ask me to any memorial ceremonies that may be held, or would you prefer that I go see her, mom, then Victor spoke up, I am confused by you, in one breath you're advising me to keep my distance from the woman and not set foot in her apartment under any circumstances, and in the next you're inquiring about Marina, judge for yourself. 
Sonora Cortez said plainly, it was her way of clarifying that she was not going to tell her son. Anything, what are your intentions for the day? I was simply curious, Sandra and I are going to meet, okay? Victor, I'll get dressed once I finish eating breakfast. Mom, I have a question for you, yes, Victor said, sure, feel free. I will be returning home late once again if you don't ask quickly enough, Sonora Cortez warned, how's your job? Victor asked, you lost your job, therefore the previous one is understandable. Mom, why do you always ask me these generic questions, given my past experiences? What kind of career am I qualified for? It's getting to me, I need time to become well, expressing his frustration. Victor promised to come up with a solution in a couple of weeks, why are you becoming so angry, Victor, the only thing I did was ask, Sonora Cortez said, very well, mom, that concludes it, I'm going to prepare myself, Victor stated, shifting the subject, not only had he kept quiet about Sandra's pregnancy from her, but he also hadn't seen, spoken, or written to her since the day she bolted from the cafe. He wasn't going to use it, he was now on his way to see Sonora Delgado rather than Sandra, he had made the astute decision not to inform his mother, he was in the dark about Sonora Delgado's plans for the day, if she had really planned a memorial ceremony, he would have been an unwanted visitor and his entire scheme would have collapsed, otherwise, he would carry out his plans as intended, other than that. He was completely stuck, the chance to inherit a three-room apartment was too good to pass. Up he could sell it for a profit, purchase a one-room apartment for himself, and live well for a long time with the rest, plus, he wasn't planning on doing anything, he walked to the graveyard to see Marina while he gathered his thoughts, he picked up a bouquet of flowers en route, Sonora Delgado was sitting close to the tomb, sobbing, when he arrived at it, he knelt down beside her and placed the flowers on the grave as he stealthily approached, I failed in my duty to safeguard you, my daughter. I apologize, Sonora Delgado bemoaned the fact that she is an inadequate mother, when Victor took a seat beside her, she paid him no mind at all, she didn't turn to him for a few minutes before she finally questioned, why are you here you scoundrel, how dare you, you were incorrect in your thinking, Sonora Delgado, rich, also, I'm having a hard time right now, there was some familiarity between Marina and me, we shared a home for a long time, I was unfair to her, Victor said, his earnestness belying his inability to shed a tear, as a wife and a person, she was excellent, his performance was lacking, though, oh, Victor, I am not convinced by your apology, Sonora Delgado accused him of bringing a woman into the house too hastily, saying that if he was genuinely sorry, he would not have done it, what a scoundrel you are, you even cheated on my marina, but then again, this is a sin that all males commit, it's unfortunate that ladies have to deal with men's drool and adventures every day, Sonora Delgado. You should not question my regret, I spent a lot of time in prison reflecting on our relationship, our life with Marina, and the fact that I left you out in the cold and changed the locks on our house, I made a lot of mistakes, but you can't undo the past, plus, I'm past the point of youth where I can make a change, reality is reality, my son-in-law status remains with you, though with some reluctance, over the years, we've shared a home, keep my Marina in your thoughts, we'll take a seat, and toast her memory with a couple of drinks Sonora Delgado was extremely exposed at that moment, and Victor knew she needed someone to talk to, someone to share memories of her daughter with, and someone to keep her company, regardless of his actions, Victor was ideal for the part, she fell for the trap, he wondered aloud, just in case, didn't you invite anyone for the memorial service, Victor? He politely inquired and questioned, memorial services are not invitation-only affairs, people can come alone if they so desire, if they are unable to do so, they pay tribute to the departed in the comfort of their own homes, Victor said, after Victor hailed a cab, he and Sonora Delgado headed to her house, they went to a store on the way, Victor spent all the money he needed to make it seem like he was truly moved, Sonora Delgado was unable to stand being alone that day, despite her disbelief in all he claimed, what Victor had planned and how much she would regret bringing him over were completely beyond her comprehension when asked about claiming the flat, Victor answered, you know, I've decided not to do it, while slightly inebriated, it's not fair and it's wrong, you helped us out a lot when we were younger, and Marina worked tirelessly for all those years, I will not need any more space than what my mother has provided equally inebriated with Sonora Delgado. 
They did not even notice the passing of time as they sat there thinking about Marina, you must still have some. Childhood photos of Marina. Right? Victor carried on naturally. I have a number of albums, we had to develop the photos from film when my little Marina was born because we didn't have the technology they have now, Sonora Delgado said, I would be grateful if you could bring these to me. After Sonora Delgado retrieved the albums, she entered the room and realized that Marina had never shown them to her, she always treated the photos very carefully, keeping them on the top shelf to prevent anyone else from seeing them. According to her, she lingered there for no more than five minutes, the pills had dissolved entirely throughout that period, Victor made it seem like he was really into perusing Marina's picture album as Sonora Delgado made her way back to the kitchen, he remained steadfast in his plan despite being slightly inebriated, but he obviously knew what was happening, well, Victor, how about another drink for the repose of my dear Marina's soul, Sonora Delgado murmured, clutching that foreboding glass. Victor responded, let's drink, no need to hold back, while simultaneously munching on some cucumber and toast, pretending to be enthused by Marina's images, he said, she was such an interesting and unique child in her childhood after spending another 20 minutes talking about Marina, Sonora Delgado cautiously rested her head on the table and drifted off to sleep, yes. She was a very special girl to me and so clever, so clever, she said, for an additional 10 minutes, Victor waited to be sure she was quite asleep, he proceeded to wash each pair of glasses and place them in a bag, soon after, he entered the room to retrieve acetone, nail art was Marina's favorite pastime, despite her remarkable appearance after Victor emptied the contents of the bottle onto the table, he went into the hallway to light a cigarette, there couldn't be any artificiality. A fire broke out in the kitchen when he tossed the nearly extinguished cigarette into it, in a flash, he unlocked the door from the opposite side, opened it, and dashed downstairs, even though it wasn't as fast as Victor had hoped, the fire spread rapidly, there were only a few drops of genuine acetone in the nail paint remover, after all, however, he was certain that Sonora Delgado could not be saved at this stage, everything had been prearranged according to his exacting standards, the cost was too high to forego, even in the case of a totally destroyed dwelling, fixing things and restoring them didn't seem like top priorities to him, the most important thing was the capital's pricey walls, which he would soon acquire in full, he didn't realize how mistaken he was until much later, what brings you all to this place, please, let me pass, an authoritative doctor told the crowd that a woman needed to be sent to the hospital immediately because she was in danger of dying if they did not, this is very terrifying, a nightmare in disguise, this poor woman, what's going to happen to her, Sandra approached one of the women close to ask about the Incident while they talked between themselves, excuse me, do you happen to know what happened here? Questioned the woman, a fire has broken out, an apartment burned down, are you blind? A woman in her 70s complained, you must be from the building across the street, right? Do you want to have a look? Sandra hurried over to the ambulance without answering the question, she had fleeting thoughts of Victor's mother-in-law. Sonora Delgado, excuse me, may I ask, will she survive, one of the teams? Doctors was tugged at by Sandra, so, tell me who you are, he wanted to know if you were related, yes and no, it's not quite right, she introduced me to her son-in-law, do you mind if I tag along, then Sandra begged, the patient's condition is quite critical, your ability to assist her is questionable, you should go see her as soon as she gets up and running again, please tell me which hospital you're bringing her to, to the city hospital in the district, a firm, it's the only one around, was his firm reply that is all ma'am resist the urge to interfere for us every second is crucial sandra who was stationed at the entryway made another attempt to contact victor despite her repeated attempts he still hadn't responded to her message regarding his mother-in-law's health her frustration was palpable as she departed without obtaining anything sonora cortez questioned victor regarding his conduct later on vio are you sick it seems like you've been drinking, have you had a few drinks in his demeanor? Victor appeared defensive, sure, Sandra and I had a few beers, in what ways is that flawed, nothing like that was spoken by me, I merely inquired, can I not ask any questions at all, yes, Sonora said, yes, mom, you can, yes, you can, but we can discuss it at a later time, Victor said, and he went back to his room, even as he took the glasses out of their packaging, he considered throwing them away.
In a perfect world, I'd just throw them away, but for the time being, I think they should. Remain, he told himself, Sonora Cortez discovered Victor still in bed the following morning, you slept in so late today, tell me, son, why, do you have any kind of illness, under her breath, she whispered, I've already made breakfast, as she peered into his chamber, no, mom, I'm doing just fine, I will be there immediately, Victor tells her, he needed nothing more than to sleep it off and forget about what had happened the day before, knocks on the door interrupted his thought that he had carried. At his plan perfectly, wondering Lord, who could it be, he spoke up, Sonora Cortez whispered, who's there, as she walked up to the door, someone shouted from behind the door open up, police, the cops were not contacted, get the door open right now, blocking our path is completely unacceptable, the arson of an apartment and an attempted murder are both committed by your kid entering Victor's room, Sonora Cortez became ICU Vio, I'm confused about everything, what's going on, anxiously, she inquired. Is it arson? The police, what's happening, you shouldn't let them in, with a trembling voice, Victor pleaded, delay them somehow while I make a rope from bed sheets and escape through the window, he began to tangle the sheets in his panicked response, do you not understand, that's right, the fourth story, then you're completely out of luck, Sonora Cortez shouted, is going to jail a better option, were their statements truthful? Were you involved in an attempted murder and the arson destruction of an apartment, my mother, yes, oh no, I unleashed my fury onto Sonora Delgado and that wicked Marina in their flat, Victor sadly stated, may they both be damned, along with the day I married that idiot my son, sigh, the experience rendered Sonora Cortez mute, but why did you do it, instead of spending my whole life with you, mom, I prefer to inherit the entirely destroyed apartment. You have no idea how stifling your concern may be to me. Understanding was never a goal of yours, however, it is not all, I need a sum. Of money, a seed fund that won't have me work all my life only to have a comfortable retirement, had I been in charge, I would have liquidated the apartment and put the proceeds toward a new venture, you have no idea, alternatively, I could have avoided those miserable 6 a.m. shifts and lived frugally for my own enjoyment, but I had no idea they would eventually overtake me, I thought I had everything under control. Victor said, his anger clearly visible, how, what gave them the idea that it was arson, and more significantly, that I was the perpetrator, feeling like a trapped animal, Victor wondered, now was the time to act, he couldn't afford to waste time thinking, what, he had no idea, oh my god, Sonora Cortez yelled out in shock as she shook her head, after all these years, she finally understood her son for who he really was, and the realization was a living nightmare, she hurriedly left the room, barely reaching the door before she turned the key and opened it, the armed guys stormed the flat and seized Victor's legs as he tried to crawl down the bed using the covers. Eventually, Sonora Delgado made it through the ordeal, the condition of Sonora Delgado rapidly worsened following the fire, her vision was impaired, she needed help moving around, and the severe burns she sustained never completely healed, leaving her body scarred, she was unflappable even though she was in pain, the Cortez sisters, Sandra and Sonora, pitched in to help her out taking care of her grocery shopping and even paying her payments online, in order to get some fresh air, Sonora Delgado would go out onto the balcony, Sandra eventually reached the hospital, where she met Victor's mother, once Sonora Cortez learned of her son's actions, she came to offer her earnest apologies, not to change his fate, but because she really regretted it, overestimating Victor, she stated that she had brought him up in a way that made him accustomed to a carefree existence, but she never thought he could be capable of such acts, Sandra told Sonora Cortez that she was pregnant with Victor's child. During their encounter, amidst the mayhem, it was the lone ray of sunshine, Sandra, whose future and Victor's son were now her primary concerns, pledged to lend a hand anyhow she could, disputes between the heirs were initially prevented by Marina's will, Sonora Delgado was left the apartment and her whole bank balance when she passed away. Things may have turned out differently if the inheritance had been opened sooner rather than six months later, but at that point, it was too late to do. Anything about it, a maximum security prison was the site of Victor's 10-year prison term, on a frequent basis, Sonora Cortez would bring him gifts, he may have never shown regret, but she loved him nevertheless and was relieved he was still with her, who knows what would have become of him if she hadn't alerted the authorities at that moment and if they hadn't foiled his plans in time. There was hope that he may have a change of heart while incarcerated, emerge from his sentence with a fresh 
perspective, and begin anew. There was a chance that Sonora Cortez had that belief firefighters were able to extinguish the blaze and save the apartments nearby because a concerned neighbor had promptly contacted them after Sonora Delgado's kitchen and portion of the hallway were renovated, she was finally able to be discharged from the hospital, she was assisted by Sonora Cortez, who hired workers and finished the renovation in a matter of days, Sandra said she wouldn't sit around for Victor's release from prison and that. She wasn't sure she could ever forgive him, without avoiding partnerships, she would meet someone else, on the other hand, she was certain that Victor would remain unchanged, regarding her grandchild, though, she would still let Sonora Cortez have her way, while Sandra hoped her own son wouldn't turn out like his father, Sonora Cortez, she felt Sonora shouldn't have had a son like Victor, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.